Hi, my name is James Harward from You Got This Photography. Welcome to week four. Can you believe it? We're already here to week four. If you just joined with us, stick with it. They say 21 days makes a habit, and if you've been with us from January 1st, it's well beyond the habit at this point, well beyond 21 days. But if you're new to this, stick with it. You got this. We want to stretch ourselves a little bit more with week four. We want to give ourselves a theme, something that makes us look a little bit differently at the world around us. It might take us away from the pictures we're typically used to making and find something just that much more unique. We're talking about texture. That's going to be the challenge I'm giving to you this week. That's the theme we want to go with. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean we got to take a picture of texture every single day? Perhaps if that's what you want to do. That would be a great way to stretch yourself. But if you go through and look at the hashtags on social media, you got this PAD, you see quite the variety that everybody's putting out there. And so what the hope is, is this gives us something to just look slightly different at the way we see the world around us. We may be looking at the same situations, just testing ourselves and seeing if we could pull out um, color, pull out uh, a unique characteristics of what we're seeing. If we're really big on landscapes and mountains and sunsets, it might mean angling the camera from up to down, seeing what's right in front of us. It might be looking at something bigger and finding a small part of it that makes a unique picture. Maybe it's going down the produce aisle and finding texture where we have it. We've had a lot of people submit pictures that are sports, what can we do at sporting events that are a little bit different? Can we get enough, close enough to the players and get the texture of the jersey with their number? I, I'm not trying to give you things that we need to do. I'm just trying to inspire ideas. All right, James, I need to stop you right there and interject just for a second to give you a few examples of what I'm talking about. So here's a visual illustration of what I would be saying. So this is a, a building that I think is neat on its own, but if I'm going for texture, what if I want to get a little bit closer? I step up to the building and I see that there are carvings in it. Well, what if I want even more texture than that? See, this makes a unique picture all by itself. It's got some abstractness to it, but it really illustrates the texture as a feature. What about this one? This is very unique with all the, the wood sticking out of there. It leads our eyes. We've got leading lines going on here for sure, but the, it's got rich texture. But I also aimed my camera at the ground. And now I've got some unique texture going on as well. So we, we don't always just look up. We look down, we look all around, and we see where we can find the texture. This drain, I mean, I guess there's nothing too unique about it. But then we change our angle and now we've got texture on texture. We've got smooth, we've got wet, we've got the moss. This was an accident. I found a place where the sprinklers had been going, but it also froze. And so that gave us some very interesting texture. Here's a pillar that I took a picture of in Seattle. Here's where I went into the, the wharf there in Seattle and I got some texture from the, the artichoke here. Got some slimy texture and some ice and some parsley from the fish. This was on a hike and somebody cut a tree just to get it out of the way of the trail. Well, in the end, that made some unique texture. This little guy, I don't know what he's doing, but he's just hanging out on a pumpkin. But that's some fun texture there too. Just found this spout on a wall. It was unique to me. It looked interesting. I love the rust. I love the... The brick, I love everything about it. There's some layers of texture. So the bird picking at the sand could have been an interesting picture, but adding the layer upon layer of texture and water and everything, it really brought out the interest of this picture. Yellowstone, just looking down at the ground. This is ice on Utah Lake after a windstorm. Old truck I just found on the side of the road, but can't deny that there's some unique texture going on here. Here's a wall. So I take pictures of walls, because what if I want to put that as a background 
for something or use it as a web asset. Here's bricks giving me a different texture. Here's an overflow of a dam, but you, you can't deny the different textures in this are what make it an interesting photo. So this one's interesting. What if we're taking pictures of people? How do we implement texture? So we've got that in the background, as you could see, and how it contrasts with the dress. Or how about the texture of the, the rock wall behind the bride? Or all these wood beams underneath a train bridge? And the moss on the, the tree? Once again, showing these pictures aren't to tell you what you have to do. It's trying to open up your minds that you could use texture all around you and capture it in a lot of different ways and, and go for something a little bit abstract. Try to go for a new way that you wouldn't have tried before watching this video. All right, back to you, James. You got this. You've got some fun stuff that you're gonna show us this week. I hope to come up with some cool things that you'll enjoy too. We appreciate you. You got this photography. We're going to give you some new themes as the weeks come by and we're going to give you some training that help you with that. Always use the hashtag, you got this PAD, PAD standing for photo a day. That allows us to follow along with you and see what you're doing. And then check out our Facebook group and add your best photo of the week. You got this.